And Divas Champion, she is a sweetheart, probably the epitome of pro wrestling and Comic Con con uh, combined. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for AJ Lee. And our other guest, he is, well, he's a gentleman we haven't seen in a little while, uh, let's just say he's, um, he's going to come back with a vengeance, I have no doubt. A former champion many times over, this is my first time meeting him, I'm so excited. Uh, somebody in this world is paler than I am, like <laughs> the Celtic warrior, Seamus. <laughs> San Diego twice, but okay. this is a uh, new adventure for me. I'm really excited to be here. Excellent. Have you been out in Florida? No, no. I just uh, I just came in, went to the green room, and straight into here. So I'm hoping, looking forward to seeing what sort of characters and, and uh, costumes <laughs> and, and uh, people are out there on the floor. I'm excited about it. Always fun. Yeah. What's that? Is Tim here? Is he outside? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I have my. I can't see anybody. <laughs> 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 Once again, uh, we are going to do a Q and A. So if you have any questions for either of us, go ahead. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 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 Okay. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Wait, is that a is that a CM Punk shirt you're wearing? It is. Are you allowed to wear that? It was the only oh, thing that was clean. clean. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's our. You've done some Wizard World shows before. Uh, how's the Wizard World experience for you? Uh, I've done one. Mm -hmm. I did uh, one in Chicago uh, a couple months ago, and it, it was amazing. These things that was are, are, are so much fun. And just happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Is that when CM Punk gave his shirt? Have <laughs> <laughs> you, you taken it off since then, or just that? No, 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 no. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Is there anybody that you guys get excited for? You know, Seamus, you've done the uh, the Comic Con thing a few times. Is there any celebrities that are announced that you're like, oh my god, I need to meet this guy? Uh, Lou Frigno actually was uh, in the back there. I was pretty mm -hmm. excited to meet him. I, I watched the whole growing up as a kid. It was uh, one of the shows that me and my grandmother watched together. As long as she didn't make me watch Murder, She Wrote and Matt Locke. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he was great. I didn't want to bother him too much though because he was digging into his food there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I really didn't want to make him angry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably wouldn't like him, did you? Uh, I still haven't met Stan Lee, and he was at Chicago, I think, mm -hmm. too, and so I, I probably like, pounce on him. Yeah, it's, on, <laughs> so it's probably for the best. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, well, let's get to, to some Q&As. First in line, sir. Uh, my name's Joe, and my question's for Seamus. I just want to know when you will be back in the WWE ring. <laughs> How are you, Joe? Nice to meet you. Uh, so, for a long time, I thought I was bulletproof. I was uh, taking a lot of crazy falls uh, in my time in the wrestling ring, and that's going back before WWE too. But this, uh, this surgery has definitely been an eye opener for me. Um, I'm in about six weeks now. I just took off the brace. I did the old uh, Sheamus suit there, which was, I'm really feeling was a big mistake right now. Uh, but uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping a couple of months. I, I don't know. It could be anywhere between four or five months. So we just take it day by day. There's some good days. Uh, there's some bad days, um, but uh, I'm actually having uh, the last couple of days have been pretty good. So I, I honestly, I'm just bored out of my mind sitting at home, watching the Divas Champ here and watching everybody else tear it up. Daniel Bryan and uh, uh, the Shield and uh, Orton and Punk and everybody just tear it up on TV. I just, I just I'm kicking myself when you get back into that ring. So the sooner for me, the better. But uh, you'll know about it soon enough. Miss you. Miss you too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
it's nice to be, uh, I like a lot of stuff on Twitter and a lot of nice messages, you know what I mean? It's, it's definitely, it's helped me, you know, get my mind together to get the rehab done and get back in the ring. So I appreciate all the positive messages. Thank you. Now we have a little fan. Somebody needs to move that mic down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hello, Emma. championship I won, but not only that, when I was your age and even a little younger, watching WWE, it was all about the WWE championship from Macho Man, Randy Savage, Bret the Hitman, Hart, Shawn Michaels. Uh, it's, to, me, it's, to me, it is the most important championship, and uh, as soon as I get back there, I'll be hoping I'll be doing everything I can to try and get back. Thanks for being the <laughs> <laughs> you thank me now, you didn't thank me then. <laughs> Hello. Ooh. Hi, my name is Dylan. Hey, Dylan. Um, this is a question for both of you. Um, what inspired you to start um wrestling? Ladies first. <laughs> um, I was gosh, maybe eleven, twelve, and I just kind of did everything my brother did. And he was uh, huge into wrestling, and uh, I just fell in love with it. And at twelve. 100% knew that this is what I was going to do. So, I knew at a very early age. For me, um, it was watching the Macho Man Randy Savage. Um, I turned on the TV one time in Ireland. WWE was, was very new. We were watching British wrestling for years. It was on Saturday morning. And I saw this guy with the, with the ski goggles, uh, with, the, with the amazing robe. Um, you know, the, the hair, the headband, and this, this beautiful woman beside him, Miss Elizabeth. And it, I just was totally glued to the screen. I was like, who is this person? What's he all about? And then I, I, I watched on and on. I saw these other interesting characters. And to me, it just captured my imagination. I was like, wow, these guys are amazing. These are like larger than life. They're, the, the action in the ring is great. This is what I want to do. And, and as a kid, as a, I just, that never went away. I just love watching it. And even now, the fact that I'm on the shelf for a while, I'm watching WWE as a fan now, and I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving the whole storylines, uh, the new corporate style with uh, Triple H, Stephanie, and Vince uh, going against the underdog, Daniel Bryan. And I, I think it's, to me, it's, it's great to kind of do that because now, like, when you're on the road, like AJ will tell you, when you're on the go all the time, you're concentrated on your matches and what you're doing. But now with the fact that I get to sit at home kind of as a fan, I'm, like, watching it like everyone else, as, as I did before I came to WWE, and I'm just... It just always captures my imagination, and to me, it's the best show in the world. 
You talked about Miss Elizabeth being with uh, the Macho Man. Is there <laughs> ever moments, uh, any divas that you want to accompany you to the ring? You think I would add to your character? <laughs> <laughs> no, AJ, uh, what, what do you say? I mean, you kissed, you kissed everyone else, right? <laughs> I'm still waiting. I have that ticket. There was a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> it says 499 now. What number are we on? I'll get to you eventually. I hope so. 50 anyway. Hi. Um, this question is for both. Um, who's your favorite person to face in the ring? Um, for me so far, it's been uh, Caitlin. Uh, just at least. I had her her tryout actually. Like so I've seen her come from like I taught her how to, you know, do everything kind of like as a baby. And so and she's just learned so much on her own and, and so to have her, you know, beat me up and now it's kinda like coming back to haunt me. Um, <laughs> is really cool and, and gratifying and uh, and and no matter what I have so much fun and uh, and I, I don't think I don't think I can have children because she spears me so much. <laughs> but she's she's my favorite. They do have some really gruesome, brutal matches. Too. Awesome to watch. We like punching each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, my definitely my favorite opponent would be Daniel Bryan. We've had a lot of history, uh, a lot of the stuff that's happened. Some of the stuff that's happened hasn't been a favor. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of fans. Obviously, the 18 second match at WrestleMania. Um, but yeah. Or you're welcome. That was your fault, right? That's your fault. I get blamed for this. She's the one who kissed him, right? <laughs> Uh, but uh, no, I mean, like, to be honest with you, like, the, the chemistry that me and Daniel have is unreal. I mean, like, he's definitely one of my favorite opponents. Our clash of styles seems to match very, very well. And I know people remember we started off as the U.S. Championship, uh, for the U.S. Championship a couple of years ago. And, you know, the live event matches we've had, and, <clears throat> and the paper, the, one of my favorite matches, the two out of three falls match of the Extreme Rules. So um, I'm really happy for him. I think he's doing a great job. He's really just st standing out on his own as, as what he is. To me, he's the best wrestler in the world. And uh, as I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back up there and I'm looking forward to get back in the ring with him because I never tire of the matches I have with him. To me, it, he definitely is my perfect opponent. Thank you. Thanks. My name's Connor and this question is for Seamus. When, oh, yeah. when you were little, did you get picked on because you were a ginger? Now do you know it? Yeah, I, I did, yeah, I did. Uh, you know, gingers, gingers are very common in Ireland. Uh, they're very common. I was not just a ginger, but uh, I was also, I don't know, uh, I'm also like, I was kind of, I was a very heavy set kid. Um, and I was very shy and very introvert. And I was an easy target for bullies. Um, and one of the, the biggest lessons I learned, they made my life live in hell. They graffitied my clothes, my books, everything. I mean, I was, I was, I got the hard side of it, but. It made me realize one thing was the fact that like I didn't want to let these guys win who were picking on me. I wanted to show them that you know I'm, I'm going to amount to something. And I, I spent my life trying to prove people wrong. Um, when I made my debut in the WWE and when I won the WWE Championship, I proved a lot of people wrong. People who said I'd never amount to anything. I proved them that I could do anything I wanted. And that goes to you, and that goes to everybody. If you put your mind to it, if I, no matter what anyone tells you, if they put you down or they're insecure themselves, the fella, if you want to be if you want to be the next WB champion, if you want to do follow your dream, a sports star, NFL, I'm telling you, don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. But if you believe in yourself, you can accomplish anything. Thanks. Hi, I'm Chloe. Um, AJ? Yes. If I were to be a WWE champion or diva, how would I work at it? Like, what would I do? Oh gosh. Um, first, I'd say school. Focus on school and get all that because you don't know. Like this, I, it could be over for me tomorrow. You know, you, you never know how long it's it's gonna last. So have that thing to back to fall back on. Um, but for me, it was just a bunch of little steps. Like I was 12 and you know said I was what I was gonna do, and so I did gymnastics and I did theater and pretty much everything I thought would help me one day and just watched, you know, the show and, and kind of learned everything I could. Um, and so, you know, I started when I was 18 and uh, just knew that, that it was 
what I wanted to do my whole life. Um, so whether it is this or whatever you eventually, you know, if it's anything else you want to do, it's take it little by little and, and you'll have so many people kind of tell you that you can't or you, you'll doubt yourself, but uh, you just kind of have to power through that. And if, I mean, if like a tiny hundred pound, you know, nerd from New Jersey can do it and anyone can. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, with, I think it's probably a bit more common for a little boy to grow up and say, I'm going to be a pro wrestler. With you being a female, did you get a lot of flack during this process? A lack of support, maybe? Yeah, and like, I had no idea I was like small. Like, I didn't realize that until it was like, I was getting beat up by like 20 guys at a training school. Um, but, you know, it's, it's harder for girls, I think. I think people think that it's not possible, especially if, you know, I'm not a supermodel, but you know, I think people doubt that. So it was, but that just makes it so much better. And I think the things that you think are not your strengths, like, are actually going to be your biggest strength. Like, I'm glad I don't look like everybody else, you know? And Seamus, when you were a little girl growing up? <laughs> <laughs> I had the cutest pigtails. Uh, Looks like a chick from Wendy's, you know that way? <laughs> I was only when I told my mom I can't do this anymore at nine years old. She, she agreed to let me wear boys' clothes. <laughs> uh, it's been great ever since then. I <laughs> shocked people there. This time. <laughs> um, my name is Corey, and um, this is a question for the both of you. Sure. What was your proudest moment in your WWE career so far? Um, this guy. <laughs> Like, I, I got the date I won this tattoo to the back of my neck. Um, but they don't get tattoos, kids, though. Like, it's, you know, it's, it's special. Um, but uh, it, 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 it was weird. It kind of, for years, all I wanted to do was get signed. And then I got signed, and I was like, okay, what's the next giant goal? And, uh, and I did a bunch of stuff in between that was kind of amazing, but I didn't do this for so long. And so it's kind of 14 years in the making. Awesome. <laughs> Right. Uh, WrestleMania 26. My first WrestleMania against Triple H was um, probably the proudest moment of my, of my uh, career. Probably the proudest moment of my life. Just walking down there, in front, just blown away by uh, 80,000 people. Uh, one of the, the biggest events uh, ever. And uh, I walked out, and uh, my knees actually nearly buckled because uh, I was just overwhelmed by the sight of the crowd and everything. And to me, it's I still remember that day as vividly as it was. I was only like three years ago, so that's not too impressive. <laughs> <laughs> not like it was 20 years ago, but uh, but yeah, it's definitely definitely the proudest moment of my career. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Steve, also known as AJ's fiance. Hi, <laughs> 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 honey. Not in public, seriously. All right, this question is for AJ. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it would have been good if you did that in a disaster. Yeah. That's, that's, why, that's why I'm glad you're out. I would have thrown everybody out. That's why I'm glad you're out for a few months. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you fancy a broke there, fella, yeah? I've been itching to, itching to hit one there the last couple of weeks, so. Maybe, maybe no matter what the question is, you answer it as well. <laughs> I count my blessings. <laughs> Uh, AJ, I've been following you for a long time, so, <laughs> Florida, uh, yes, uh, since, so since your days with Florida Championship Wrestling and all those days past up until your current glory stardom that you are now, I knew you when you weren't that popular. <laughs> My question to you is, I, we all have heard the stories about how you were, had to go from living from place to place and a difficult lifestyle. But my question to you is, when you hit the pillow, when you went to sleep every night, what inspired you to know that you can overcome these obstacles and become what you truly want to be? Um, it's, it's weird because I, I you know, like you uh, alluded to, like I had a very hard childhood and you know everyone knows the story I was homeless I lived in my car um, and and 
pretty much every scent I had went to like you know trying out one day and uh, to me there wasn't an option I just kind of knew like in my heart as a little kid I was like well I'm going to be there and so it was just let's get through this and just become stronger and learn stuff from it and I'm going 100% to, to be champion and be here one day and I never doubted that um, and, and I I think that's just maybe a thing that you have and you, you kind of realize what it is that you want or the place you belong and there's nothing in the world that can stop you from getting there um, and so when I did get signed you know I'm so grateful for everything and everything feels so amazing and it's you know shocking and, and so cool but it also feels right like like no I'm, su I'm supposed to be here I'm supposed to be champion and it I don't know you, you kind of can will stuff into fruition I think but, thank you Seamus, I still love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't creep me out, please. <laughs> um, my name is Ashton, and how did you come up with the broadest kick? The bro kick. I don't know. How did I go up with the bro kick? Yeah. Okay, uh, good question. Um, Basically, I was in FCW training, and there was a guy there called Steve Chamberlain, who, who was the guy who, uh, so, have anyone heard the story about how the John Laronitis signed the wrong one-legged wrestler? Yes. yes. Okay, well, this was the one that was supposed to get signed. So I was training with him, he's got have one leg, prosthetic leg, and there was a guy called Mark Starr there, who was, uh, he was coming down to help him. Mark Starr was in uh, WCW, former WCW superstar, um, and yeah. <clears throat> He basically, we were talking about stuff and I was trying to, you know, I was not happy to where I was at, the moment. at that time. I wanted to try and come up with different moves. And he came up, uh, he taught me about the, the pump kick, the, the scissors kick, the bro kick. So I worked with him, on it with him for, for about a couple of hours to get my flexibility and everything. And uh, presto, I started using the bro kick. Uh, no, Mark Starr passed away this year, uh, unfortunately. Um, but um, as I said, I'll always remember from that. I'll always remember, remember him for, for taking his time every day to help me. But uh, he, uh, he's the one that came up with the bro kick for me, and it's proved to be my most successful move. Thanks, fella. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> now, of course, a lot of these moves are, are protected and whatnot. A lot of what you perform is obviously um, well rehearsed, so to speak. You guys are professionals doing it. But is there a moment maybe the bro kick connected a little too well and somebody doesn't forgive you to the day? Like Del Rio, actually. Uh, I think uh, after after WrestleMania 20, 20, uh, 28, uh, that night in Miami, I literally, I think I just kicked Del Rio's head off into the front row. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch any of my matches back after that, he literally tried to get me back every single night. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was probably one of the the, the, the best bro kicks I ever ever. Had. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> you have any of those moments, AJ? Um, no, I'm like two pounds. I just, <laughs> I've, I've gotten hit a lot. <laughs> so, I, I just get beat up a lot. So. <laughs> My name is RJ. I don't know if you remember me, but I've, I've met you, Seamus, a couple times in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hey, RJ. Hey. How you doing? Good. Uh, this question is for the both of you. Um, when and how was your first opportunity to wrestle for the WWE? Um, I was uh, the secretary, and there was a, a tryout camp that you could pay for uh, at FCW. And you know, I, I knew I wasn't one of those girls that would get found in like a magazine or something, so I had to go to them and uh, save. I, I couldn't afford the first one, and so I had to wait like six months or seven months and just saved and at the you know barely eight, so I could afford it and. Um, it was 70 guys and me and like I think like two models and uh, and I got signed after five days so I don't know how but it happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I I live in, I started wrestling in Ireland then I moved over to UK. I was wrestling for All Star Wrestling with a guy called Robbie Brookside and then uh, the, I had a couple of tryouts in Dublin. Um, didn't really go too well. I was just starting out so I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and after more experience, then uh, WWE do two tours of Europe a year, and they do two TVs in, uh, in the UK every April and then every uh, November. So 
Myself, Drew McIntyre, and Wade Barris were involved in our first uh, proper tryout, which was in like Manchester 2006. We did okay, but like we didn't do too good. No, nobody was signed, so the three of us went back again in April uh, 2007 in Earl's Court in London. And they signed the three of us, so it's um, it was. Well, I didn't get hired on my first time. I kept going back. I flew myself to Milan for a tryout, and I kept going back and with more and more experience. But eventually. In 2007, uh, they signed us up and we, we all moved over here to America. We've been here since. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Katie. I actually had a question for you, Seamus. Hey, Katie. Yeah. Um, who's somebody in NXC that you'd like to maybe go against when you come back? That's a good question. Um, so, uh, Adrian, Adrian English, right? No, 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 hang on, Pac, Pac, Adrian Neville, sorry, yeah, I just know him as Pac. Uh, I, I, I remember Pac, do you ever hear of yeah. Adrian Neville, yeah. Adrian Neville is like, to me, he's the greatest high flyer uh, for the last, I don't know, for as long as I can remember. I mean, don't get me wrong, we've got some great, like Evan Bourne and, you know, Tyson Kidd, who's kind of, a, you know, um, he's a uh, Ray, obviously, but like, this, this kid is just unbelievable. He stayed in my house when we had some Irish with wrestling TV tapings back in Dublin and 2005, I think it was, 2006, and I was just blown away by what this guy could do. Incredibly down to earth, incredible shape, incredibly talented, and it's only a matter of time before he just blows the entire WWE universe away. And I, 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 he's one of the top guys down there, and he's one of the guys I cannot wait to get in the ring with, because on the independent scene when I was in England and Ireland, I never had an opportunity to wrestle this kid, but uh, he's... He's definitely going to be, as far as I'm concerned, I think he's going to be, he's going to make a huge impact in the WWE next couple of years. I'm, I'm excited about him. Wait to see him, I'm telling you, he's phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. That would be a good question for AJ, too. Yeah. Um, it's cool because I feel like there's like different generations, and like my FCW generation was uh, myself, Caitlin, Oksana, Naomi. And uh, I think we're all kicking butt, and, and that's a really good group. Um, and then they've seen people come and go, and now they have this solid group of uh, Paige and Emma and Bailey and uh, Sasha, and, uh, and they're the, they're all so strong already. They're doing way better than we were at that point. So I think they're going to come up here and just blow us out of the water. Like I can't wait. I, I need some competition. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is DJ. I have a question for both of you. Um, if you were able to remember or describe it, uh, what was it like meeting Vince McMahon for the first time? Because it seems like everybody has a Vince story, such an imposing uh, figure. Do you want me to start in this one? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it was the same. It was the same tryout they did for uh, our same same one that got signed. Me, Drew, Wade, <laughs> right there. And uh, obviously, he is a very intimidating figure, especially when you don't know him. Like, you just see him, you know, you've known him for television, that's about it. He's, he's the boss. So, <clears throat> kind of summing up the, the courage, you sit at the table uh, in catering in Arrow's Court, and it's like, oh, you know, I'm going to go over, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to say hello to Vince McMahon, I'm going to go over and introduce myself, because, you know, I want to be part of WWE, I want to be part of the future. So, this is like, this is what I'm telling myself now, you know, I'm getting the courage. So, I got up anyway, <clears throat> I walked to the table. When, uh, hello sir, uh, I'm, I'm Seamus, he puts his hand out, I shake his hand, he pulls his hand away. I was like, I was like, you know, I was like he goes, give me a proper handshake. I was like, gave him a firm handshake, that's better. And then he turned away and walked, and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm a big eater. Anyway, and that was, that was my, uh, that was Vince's, uh, myself, first, first meeting. Uh, Funny enough, it's gone better since then. <laughs> yeah, that was a very embarrassing moment for me. Oh AJ, follow that. <laughs> I honestly, um, I don't even, I can't remember, like, the first time. I think it was just a, a cloud of fear for, like, a year. Um, but uh, I have this really weird, like, obsession with the McMahons. And, uh, like, I talk about Stephanie all the time, how I, like, like save lockets of her hair, um, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's kind of the same thing with, with Vince. I just uh, any time around them, I am I am a thirteen year old girl who is like has a crush and is just like <laughs> like any every time it hasn't stopped like it, it's still to this day. But um, he's like, he's just he's really amazing, kind of like fatherly and, and 
and I'm, I'm just so obsessed with them. So, Thank you, Bob. <laughs> so Where's our guy in the red shorts and the punk t-shirt? Where is he? There he is down there. The guy who asked the question, the red, this red shorts and the CM GTS t-shirt, the yellow one. You don't feel so weird now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I proposed to Stephanie before. Still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Timmy, and I was wondering, like, so far this year, what was the most shocking moment to you? Uh, for me, uh, it was definitely uh, SummerSlam. Um, I just, you know, like everyone else, I thought I knew Randy Orton. As I said, I was sitting at home as a fan, um, and I just knew that, like, when I saw that uh, Brian Daniel had won, you know, I, I was expecting, I was expecting Orton to cash in, and then I guess it was the part with Triple H pedigree, Daniel Bryan, so I'm talking about. I thought it was going to be like, because everyone expected uh, Randy to cash in. I thought he wasn't going to bother cashing in, or he made, when he, especially when he went down the ramp and had to turn around. I definitely didn't see that coming. So, to me, that's one of the, uh, that, was, that was for me an eye opener as well. I didn't expect it. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, the fact that they didn't turn my mic off for week. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't really have a specific moment. I think just any time, as selfish as it sounds, any time like, I get to do something really cool, I'm like, really? Me? You're letting this happen? Okay. Like, so all of those moments are, are my favorite. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So how much of the pipe bomb shells, they call it, how much of that was just spur of the moment, pre-planned, scripted, however you want to look at it, how did that come to be? <laughs> that, um... Uh, I was asked to be on the reality show and said no, and I don't think that went over so well. Um, and I, you know, I said yeah, Vince is very fatherly, and he, uh, he was so cool, and he's like, okay, she, you know, doesn't want to do this. Let her stay. Why she doesn't want to do this? And uh, nobody helped me. No, like I just they gave me a mic and said, and those girls didn't know what was going to happen, <laughs> and, uh, and I think it was pretty obvious they didn't know what was going to happen, if you watch it back, <laughs> um, they're a little upset, and, um, uh, and so that was maybe one of the coolest things to me, was the, everything I've done for a year or two has been people being very brave and open-minded and trusting in me, and I, I guess I, you know, prove them right every time and I keep getting those opportunities but it was that was the oddest moment to me where they were just like here's the night go start some trouble and <laughs> and I yeah and I think I I just I can't even remember I just went for it and and didn't get in trouble somehow <laughs> I don't know but um yeah that was a hundred percent me and and I'm trying to to make this business better for women and that's all I want uh, is to be able to leave one day and it continues on and, and I just want everyone to step their game up, that's all. <laughs> that was cool. uh, my face is blurred out in that show. <laughs> that's my claim to fame. I blurred my face and I'm not pretty enough for Tell the Divas. Cried myself to sleep. <laughs> Because I, I to, to me, it, like I think, like those girls are brave, and they they don't have any time off, and that's really cool that they can sacrifice their life to have a camera follow them around all the time. I can't physically do that, um, but uh, so the, the, the camera crews know that, like I'm, uh, you know, like I'm like turn, turn the camera away, like anytime they're near me, and so. <laughs> Recent development has been if I'm in the hallway and the cameras are there, I hear a radio go off. And they're like, AJ, AJ. And then they all. <laughs> and it's hilarious. I'm like, I'm not that scary. I'm like two feet tall. <laughs> but so that's what's happening next day. They, they run from me. It's awesome. <laughs> Have you ever thought of abusing that? Like, start to walk out of a room and then turn around? <laughs> Just do laps. Yeah. yeah. Okay, my name is Jose. Uh, this is for both. Uh, who is the person that you had a brutal match with? Uh, one of my favorite matches will be with Daniel Bryan. 
Uh, I, I think that two out of three falls is definitely up there. Just, I've had a lot of matches I really enjoyed. One with John Morrison in that ladder match in uh, 2010 at TLC. But uh, Brian's definitely up there. Is, uh, two out of three falls, Chicago is one of my favorite matches. To the right, that's the question you're asking, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, you know, I said Caitlin's my favorite opponent. Um, I think my, when you, especially when you've done this for so many years, like if we have, you want to have that perfect match, and like it doesn't exist. Like there's always gonna be something that you know you're not happy with. But to me, like the closest I've ever uh, come to a perfect match was that match at Payback with Caitlin, and it was like a 17 minute long Divas match, or it, like it, I don't know. It's just I never thought that'd be possible. So that that's my favorite match of all time. Just downhill from here. <laughs> <Just start laughs> Thank <right>. you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name's Sean. Uh, I got a curveball question for both of you. Since we're at uh, Comic Con, I thought I would stick with that theme. If you guys could have any random superpower, what would it be and why? Try not to say flying or super strength or something. No, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do the crawl walls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, biggest, uh, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, and I'd love to be able to just crawl walls. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I guess, just, I don't know, just crawl walls. There you go. My answer. <laughs> um, one of my favorites is uh, Jean Grey, and so I think like any of her powers is not like Dark Phoenix. That's my favorite saga of all time, Dark Phoenix saga, but I don't want to be that. Um, <laughs> it's evil. But uh, yeah, I think anything, any sort of telekinesis is, is so interesting to me to kind of be yeah. able to get inside someone's head without them knowing that I like that. Awesome. I think, does it make me evil? I guess so. <laughs> Possibly. A little bit. Okay. Uh, That's pretty dark. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> one's innocently climbing walls, and the other one's climbing uh, mines. What's he saying? Like, let's go with the easier eggs. Climb walls. <laughs> Probably because I uh, fell off a lot of walls when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Foz. It's a pleasure to meet both of you. Pleasure to meet you, too. I have a very, very important question for Seamus. Actually, two of them. One, what is your favorite beer? <laughs> That's very important, actually. It's a very important very question important. from one Irishman to another. First, stout-wise, stout is Guinness. Definitely yes. Guinness stout, but as a beer goes, I have to go to Pint of Carlsberg. Nice. There you go. Everyone under 21 can come your ear. My second question is also for Seamus. I'm here with a very, very big fan of yours who's very shy. Right, she's very pale. She's very ginger. <laughs> You're really painting her up good here. <laughs> Great job. She wants to know if she can come give you a hug. Of course she can. Where is she? Stephanie. <laughs> she's too shy to come up here and ask herself. Come on up here, Stephanie. Come on. Big round of applause. <laughs> you know the first come get a hug. Okay? How are you doing? Thank you so much, sir. Hey, you're, you're a good friend. I have that sweater, and when I wore that sweater on SmackDown, he called me a schoolgirl. I remember that. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget. Admittedly, I did expect the hug request to, to come to AJ first. <laughs> I like the switch. I'm shocking all sorts of people here right now. <laughs> How are you, fella? Good. What's your name? Joey. Hey, Joey. <laughs> what? Do you have a question? Yeah. <laughs> How did it feel when you won the Royal Rumble match? Uh, how did it feel? Um, it felt amazing. It was, I got to go to a pay-per-view. I used to sneak down, like, Ireland's five hours behind. Um, so the pay-per-views when they were on in Ireland, they were on, like, like one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. So I used to sneak down on the school, the night before school, like, the worst floorboards in the house too. And my old man with that would, would have killed me if he knew I was getting up. I was creeping down the stairs, sweat pouring down me my forehead, you know what I mean, trying to get caught. And I just sit in this front room watching the Raw Rumble because it was the most exciting pay-per-view. One of the most exciting pay-per-views. And uh, 
when I when I when I kicked uh, Jericho's head off, and uh, <laughs> I said that in a, you know a good good humor sense, um, I it was unbelievable. I, I, there's so many emotions went through my mind. It's like achieving one thing after another. I've been very fortunate, very lucky in what I'm doing. I love what I do. I've been very successful. I've been very lucky in what I've done, and um, it was again another huge moment for me and a moment I'll never forget. Thank you. Thank you. Kind of hard to follow that question up, but um, fellow Irishman, families from Roscommon. All right. Uh, here's the most important question that nobody's asked Thin Lizzy or you two? Which one? Thin Lizzy. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone here who hasn't heard of Thin Lizzy or listen to them, you got you guys listen to some of their tracks on uh, iTunes. They're phenomenal. And you two are a great band and massive, but Thin Lizzy really are the, the heart and soul. <laughs> I wonder what their reaction would have been if you would have said the other band. <laughs> I know. Bono owes me money anyway, that's why I'm just saying. I gave him five dollar loan before I never gave it back, so that's why I've, that's why I went to Lizzie as well. Can't that trust him. Don't lend him, don't lend Bono any money. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, is that a true story? That Bono owes you money? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Hello. What's your um, name? My name is Marlon. Hey, Marlon. Um, I have a question for the both of you. Sure. What year did you get your first championship? This year. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, I, I was a, a tag team champion in a independent promotion, probably, oh, gosh, I don't even know, 2008, maybe? I, I can't even remember. Um, and it's like an all-girls promotion, so it's a while ago. This one's prettier. <laughs> uh, I won my first championship. It was the IWW, Irish for Wrestling Heavyweight Championship, in 2005 in some of the worst matches of my career. <laughs> I'm very proud to say that. They were so bad. Okay. Um, but uh, it was still a big moment for me. Um, so uh, definitely start, helped start my career. Thank you, Marlon. Hi. Hello. I was wondering, um, now that we have an openly gay wrestler, if you could see the WWE going with a gay or lesbian storyline anytime soon? Uh, I, I don't see why not. I mean, it just depends what the members, uh, I mean, in the sense of if it's a good storyline, no matter what the storyline is, it has to be good, it has to be entertaining, and I think that's the most important thing. I think I, I think that we have opened up so much, and like just and standards alone, like I, you're seeing different people and different, you know, just even with like in our women's division, you're seeing girls that are, you know, super jacked or tiny, like we, things you haven't seen before. So why not? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, my name is Susie. I'm hey, in love with you, Asian. Like you're the best wrestler. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, my question is, um, do you ever feel intimidated by anyone like that's a wrestler? Um, uh, I'm I'm super confident and like I can you know I know I I like to look at the girls and be like I'm better than all of you. Um, but physically they can all murder me. Um, and, uh, so, like, I talk up a big game, and, like, recently, I, like, I, you know, I think I'm so tough, and then I run into the ring, and they beat the crap out of me. Um, so, I think I'm always physically intimidated. Like, I, there's, I can't lift people or throw them or anything like that. So, um, I pay the price a lot for my mouth. Um, but, uh, I've been in the ring with Tamina, and that woman is <laughs> oh my god, like she gets this look in her eyes, but you're, like you talk to her like 10 minutes before, and then you, you, you're in the ring with her, and she's just like, and she's, oh god, like yeah, she, she's scary. Oh, I'm scary of her too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody that you've been nervous getting in the ring with, Seamus? Tamina. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jamie. Hello. Um, this question is for both of 
both of you, if there was a movie that was made about you guys, who would you want them to, who we would you want you to play as you? And what theme song would you want to have as like the main theme? <laughs> I can't think of a theme song, um, but I uh, I feel like I'm the WWE version of Tina Fey, and so <laughs> that's like so, so Caitlin and myself say that we are the WWE version of Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. So that's who um, who I would want. Will Ferrell. <laughs> I don't care what the music is, as long as Will Ferrell. Thank you. Thanks. That was a good answer. Hi, my name is James. Hey, James. And if you could be anybody for the WWE or US Championship at WrestleMania, who would it be? Um, yeah, I'll go first, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, I've always wanted to face Undertaker WrestleMania, but if it's for the WWE Championship, and uh, Undertaker makes that appearance once a year again, I know I keep saying this guy, and it's gonna, I'm going to sound like the fella again. Red shorts, yellow t-shirt, stand up. Cross <laughs> <laughs> this guy because I mentioned Daniel Bryan again, but I think if Daniel Bryan is WWE Champion going into WrestleMania, I think it would be a great story uh, to capitalize on Mania two years ago when he was World Heavyweight Champion, and I think because of the US Championship reign as well, it'd be. Definitely an interesting concept to, to see if, because uh, uh, Daniel Bryan has never beat me for a championship, and I think that self in the story will be will be really good, and really interesting, and there's a lot of unfinished business. And I think one of the reasons Daniel Bryan went over the edge, apart from <coughs> this thing, this person here beside me, uh, driving him over the wall or over the edge, but I think the whole 18 second thing drove him crazy. I think he'd love a chance to put that right. Um. <laughs> I'm going to say person, okay? This girl. Right. So I'm just fun. jealous, okay? I'm number 500 in this ticket line. I'm, still <laughs> I'm bitter about that. We'll get there. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, I, uh, I, would, uh, I would sell a vital organ to uh, uh, Russell Stephanie. And so, like, that to me is my dream match of all time. Like, we had one moment together in, um... Oh, are you okay, baby? <laughs> <laughs> see, she wants to see it, too. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we had uh, one moment the night after I won the title, so it was, like, the best week ever of my whole life. Uh, I, was, I was just talking smack in each other's face in the ring, and I think that people reacted to that really well, and so kind of saving that and, and hoping that that could happen one day. I would, I would be done with life if that happened. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Can we just discuss it? We have an oompa loompa in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> you guys gave me nightmares for years. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that. Uh, my name is Damon, I got a question for AJ. Are you still friends with Caitlin behind the scenes and everything after everything that happened with the Divas Championship? Uh, it, you know, the, the funny thing is I think that uh, why that worked was because we're uh, on a different level. Like, it, it's just so much more fun to punch your friend in the face than anyone else. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, she's, she's my best friend and, and uh, just sometimes I beat her up. Um, <laughs> But uh, to me, they're, and not just because I'm playing favorites because she is my best friend, but to, to me, she is, uh, if it can't be me, I want it to be her. Like, she is the, one of the only people, I think, that ha absorbs information and wants to learn every single day and gets better and better and gets it. And I think it's really hard for people to get it um, and not be selfish and kind of just understand what it takes to be successful. And uh, she reminds me of, of like, a... A Trish, um, and so I, I see that for her future, and, uh, and I would love to kind of be there along for the ride. Also, since I, I feel bad for you, since Shane has got a hook, can I get it? <laughs> 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 I knew it was coming. No, 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 Where'd you go? <laughs>
Did you cover my face? That was hilarious. You're too creepy. Sit down. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Um, I got a question. I know he doesn't wrestle very much, but would you ever want to wrestle Brock Lesnar in WrestleMania? Absolutely. Definitely. Without a doubt. He's uh, he's one of the biggest, most physical uh, superstars WWE's ever seen, and like I. I the match of the night in SummerSlam was Brock Lesnar and CM Punk. Yeah. I was blown away by that match. Yeah. And um, I'd love to face either of those guys. Uh, I've faced Punk in the past, but I'd love to go to crack it up. Brock definitely WrestleMania. I know we would literally beat the ropes out of each other. Probably I'd be flying through the air more than he would, um, <laughs> as he's throwing me around the place. But um, it definitely would be, to me, one of the most, uh, the biggest matches of my career. And AJ, what did you think of the Burn Notice finale? I saw you tweeted about oh that. Oh my gosh, I cried. Um, does anyone here watch that show? It's so great. Uh, Fiona Nobody is like one show. of the best female characters ever. And like, it, it's, it's rare that, they, that television has a female character that's just strong all the time. Yeah. Um, so, and, and she has this one line that kind of like, I thought, like, keep in the back of my pocket during you know, all the, the boyfriends. Uh, which is the, uh, I don't want him killed, I just want him bruised a little. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> How you doing? How are you? Good. Uh, congratulations, AJ, on BMW Guitar Fit. Thank Still. you. Uh, Chambers, this for both of you. Okay. I wonder, after a match is completed, has any WWE superstar ever take you off or make you mad after a match? Like if they were in the match? Yeah, if you're in the match, after it was completed, is there any any of the superstars ever you made you made mad or anything like that? And why? It's important to be for me to be professional at all times. I think uh, just just because of what we do, uh, uh -huh. things in the heat of the moment, things go ahead, go ahead happen out there that you know you, you can't predict or you know you can't control. Um, there's a couple of times I've walked, walked out and, you know, I, I try and not get carried away with it. Normally after a match, depending on what it is, if I am heated, I just walk away, I just go to the back and I just find somewhere quiet just to just relax. Because I don't want to say anything that I don't regret and also I just want to, you know, keep together, be professional. As I said, like, things happen out there that you right. don't control over, so, but you always have to be professional at all times. Yeah, I'd just I'll echo that. I don't think I've ever... I'm, if anyone is probably me, like I, I have a temper, <laughs> but um, I, usually pretty nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dan. It's nice to meet both of you. Uh, just wondering, this question is for both of you, by the way. Okay. If you could have a main event match with anybody in any uh, industry or from history, who would it be? For me, uh, well, for me, it'd be Macho Man. Um, there's a couple of yeah. awesome man. Uh, he was the first superstar that I laid eyes on, as I said earlier on, and he was the one that you know sticks to me all this time. He was, he just captivated my imagination. Everything he did, and, and back in the day, if you watch at that time, he definitely. He was at the forefront of just trying innovative things and always trying something different. He didn't do the same stuff that everybody else did. He tried different things. I know his elbow off the top rope, but was grabbing the guy by the back of the neck and jumping over the top and slingshotting the guy back into the ring. He was just, his character was just, he was just a crazy, uh, interesting, intriguing character. And of course, with Elizabeth there, it just, it was weird. Like, you see him, the way he's dressed and everything, the way he goes on, and you have this, like, perfect, you know, um, beautiful woman beside Miss Elizabeth, like it's just everything just about it shouldn't have worked, but it worked perfectly. Oh, gosh, I used to love Miss Elizabeth by the way. She was my first idol of all time, but I would never want to like beat her up though. Um, maybe Sherry, I love Sherry so much. Um, and she's also kind of terrifying. Um, <laughs> But I feel like I would love to uh, beat up one of the guys. Like it's just you know something we can't do nowadays. But uh, I have so many the favorites. You know, Eddie was my favorite of all time, and right now I'm uh, I'm really pushing on, on Twitter for a feud with Punk. Uh, <laughs> I just really want to beat him up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>
always wondered how much input you guys have on your theme music. Like you get any or they tell you what theme music to have. You've heard the music, right? <laughs> You've heard it, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not... I think that's why he's asking. <laughs> 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 It sounds like a like an anime theme <laughs> song, which I kind of like dug that. But um, it was it was so sugary sweet that I was like, what? It's happening. But um, and then I just kind of showed up one time, and it was uh, the new one, um, and I was like, who is this for? Like there was like bubbles in my Tron, and I was like, what? Like but um, but uh, it, it, they just it, it became this thing where it was just sort of more recognizable, and and, uh, and Michael Hayes was like, no, anytime, you know, they get to play your music, like, let them just get used to it, and, and so we kind of, like, pushed to get it, like, I had so many random, like, skip around with my music, and, uh, and, and it, I, I love it because it's, you know, just familiar, but it is not very <laughs> great, <laughs> but I love it anyway. <laughs> it's catchy. Yeah. It's very catchy. Know. Uh, my music, I've had my music since um, FCW, I had my own uh, team and then they wouldn't let me use it uh, for some copyright reasons, so um, I've, I've realized that like, I, I would love to have Dropkick Murphys or something do my theme, theme music, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I talked about that for a while, but I've kind of realized that our flag and Molly or something like something really, like, but at this stage, it's more, the more than anything now, I think it's when your music hits, uh, Fans, everybody recognizes the music. It's not more about is the music good or not anymore. It's more that oh, that they recognize with me, so that yeah. gets that reaction. And um, but uh, I don't know. I think I'm used to it now, and it's it's grand. It's good. Like it's okay. Like but I still down the road, I'd love to have maybe drop Big Murphy's um, hold me on music. So if you're watching there, lads, on this, <laughs> this camera here, uh, hello, looking for you to write a song. All right. Cheers. There you go. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I apologize for the car. Uh, the worst comment was when I was, uh, I went to the Monster Factory in 2002 for three months uh, to, to train. And I was, I was living in Gloucester City. And uh, for some reason I was walking down um, with a wife beater on down the street. And it's this random drunk across the street just started shouting obscene stuff at me and being pasty. And uh, I can't really repeat what he said, but uh, it was... It was actually very eye-opening. Um, I've been called everything, fella, from vampires to human jar of mayonnaise, uh, <laughs> to a pasty tea bag, uh, pasty face tea bag. That was another one. That was Triple H's one. Um, but uh, <laughs> no, 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 don't laugh at this. It's horrible stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, but saying that, there's no shame of being pasty. There's no shame of being, uh, you know, white as white as, as a bottle of milk because. It's definitely helped me stand out. It's definitely maybe instantly recognizable. Whenever the, all the other guys are all the sort of superstars and trying to come up with some sort of like character or gimmick to make them stand out, all I had to do was just take my top off. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that guy? <laughs> what is he doing walking around? Is he dead? Check his pulse. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's it really. So I'm, I'm proud to be pasty. I should be proud to be pasty too. And uh, for AJ, can I give the best Steve's champion ever a hug? <laughs> yeah, we're just handing out hugs. Uh, sure, but I'm going to do the protected one so it's not a weird boob one. No, I'm I feel like this is my fault. <laughs> Probably is. is. Why won't Wizard World return my calls? <laughs> well, on that note, uh, I know you guys got to get to your booths and whatnot, take some pictures, sign some autographs. Thank you for your time. Let's hear it for AJ.